Are Disney's most popular restaurants worth the high price tag and stress of trying to get in? Let's find out. Hello everyone, it's Molly with Mammoth Club and today I'm asking and answering a simple question. Are Disney's most popular restaurants worth it? Are they worth the hassle of trying to get a reservation? Are they worth taking time out of your vacation to visit places you might not be going otherwise? And are they worth the high price tag? So today we are going to three of the most popular, hardest to get into, I said hardest to get into too many times, haven't I? What else was I could say? Popular? I said that too. In demand? Stressful? I need coffee however you want to describe them. These are the ones that when your 60 day reservation window opens up, you are clamoring at your keyboards to get. These are the ones we are constantly checking and refreshing and trying to get a reservation at. So we are headed to three of them today, three completely different experiences, and we're gonna see what we think. In today's video, we are headed to three completely different vibes, three completely different experiences at three completely different locations in Walt Disney World. We are headed to Topolino's Terrace at the Riviera Resort, Space 220 at Epcot, and Ohana at the Polynesian Village Resort. Let's get to eat. First up, I am at Disney's Riviera Resort, which is a deluxe DVC location. I am headed up to the rooftop to have breakfast with some friends you might recognize. Welcome to Topolino's Terrace. This is a 10th floor rooftop restaurant here at the Riviera. And uh, the reason it's so popular, these guys right here. Topolino's Terrace, while at night, is a signature dining, non-character, fancy experience. During morning breakfast time, it is Mickey's Breakfast a la Art, in which Mickey and the gang have gone to Europe to become artists. So you're going to have Mickey visit you as a painter, Minnie as a poet, Donald as a sculptor, and Daisy as a ballerina dancer. And y'all, it is the cutest thing you will ever see. These costumes are amazing. But the reason this restaurant is so popular, more popular than any other character dining on property, it's the hardest reservation to get. It's because the food is phenomenal. It is not a buffet. It is a plated breakfast. And because this is a signature restaurant at the Riviera themed to Italy and France, the food is truly divine compared to other character dining, especially. A lot of the ingredients they import from France and Italy, like the cheeses and olive oils, some of the sauces. It's really a nice meal. The character interactions have been wonderful during my past experiences, and uh, I'm excited to eat. I haven't been here in a while, and this is one of my faves. And look how cute Mickey is. Hi, Mickey. And Topolino's Terrace Breakfast is so popular. I didn't even have a reservation this morning. I rolled the dice and took a gamble and was able to join via the walk-up waitlist. The walk-up waitlist is a function in the My Disney Experience app where if a restaurant ends up having availability, they'll post it and you can do a walk-up. The tricky thing about the walk-up waitlist is you have to be very close to the restaurant. I was literally on the Skyliner hanging over this restaurant and then walking on the property and it was still telling me I was too far away. You are also not able to park at most Disney resorts unless you have a confirmed dining reservation. So if you're trying to drive up to join the walk-up waitlist, it's probably not going to happen. I uh, parked over at Epcot and then rode the Skyliner over and was able to join that way. But that's a huge gamble if you are on vacation to risk coming all the way over to Riviera to then not even be able to join the walk-up waitlist. My best advice is check the morning, keep checking the walk-up waitlist, and it will tell you if there's availability and how long it will be, or if there's no availability at that time. It just won't let you join until you're much closer to the restaurant. So I've been monitoring it all day. On the Skyliner, it said 40 minutes, then 50 minutes, and then by the time I got here, it actually was only 35-minute posted walk-up waitlist, and it ended up only being a about 10 minutes, which was great. But that walk-up waitlist can be a great tool to get into some restaurants that you're not able to secure a dining reservation for, but just there are some nuances with it. Toblino's Terrace Breakfast is $45 per adult, which is basically the running price of character meals these days. That's the same price as Crystal Palace, as Chef Mickey's, as Tusker House. Um, and I really like it because, again, the food's great, and I like it because it's not a buffet. It's a plated meal. Now, there's some controversy with that because, of course, a buffet is all you care to enjoy. But I find a plate coming to me to be a much more relaxing experience than trying to get everything up on the buffet. Whatever the characters are coming to your table while you're up at the buffet, trying to deal with the buffet with kids, that can be really tricky. So let's take a look at the menu. Um, my server told me I can pick one as a main and then they can also do a half portion of another one as a side in case you'd like to try two different things. So they have a quiche gruyere with house made pancetta. They have avocado toast, a fruit plate, two eggs, any style with a protein. That's kind of your classic breakfast, a wild mushroom scramble. That is a plant-based breakfast, a sour cream waffle, smoked salmon, wood fire butcher steak, as well as a French toast brulee. So lots of deliciousness there on the adults menu. The kids is $29 aged three to nine 
five, you can do a scrambled egg meal, a fruit and yogurt meal, or these really cute Mickey waffle dippers, uh, which I recommend. My nephews got those and loved them. In addition to your mains, and if you choose to do another item as a side, any non-alcoholic beverage or multiple non-alcoholic beverages are included as well. My server, Mike, he's great. He started me off with some Florida sunshine juice, which is also known as pog juice, jungle juice, Stitch Juice, it's that signature passion fruit orange guava juice they serve around Disney at different locations. Obviously, I also got a coffee. I just need a water to complete my uh, breakfast trifecta. You know, you gotta always have three drinks. Not included with the price, but you can add on extra. They have some breakfast specialty cocktails. They have a breakfast old fashioned, a Tuscan pear spritz. They have a coffee cocktail. I know they do a variety of mimosas and champagne drinks as well. They also have some non-alcoholic specialty drinks, such as a pineapple jalapeno margarita, a Bloody Mary, a peach repose, which has got peach mint, lemon, and soda water. That sounds amazing. Again, these are all additional charges. Every table is also going to get the bread service, which y'all, it is so cute. It makes me want to scream. It's a little paint bucket. And then the spreader is like a little paint brush right here. They have the same ones at Animator's Palette on the cruise line. All of the pastries are homemade. The honey butter is homemade. The strawberry jam is homemade. And then this is chocolate hazelnut spread, AKA Nutella. He said that's the only thing not house made. We've got some croissants, some apple turnovers in here and some mini muffins. Get it? Like mini. Hi, Mickey. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. I love your painter outfit. Have you been painting? What do you like to paint? Minnie? You're so sweet. Can I give you a hug, Mickey? Coffee. It's the most exciting thing I'm gonna review today. Gotta have coffee. I do like that they use the Riviera blend. Joffrey's does signature blends for different locations, and there's a signature one here at Riviera. It did taste very good. Black, you know, got a little bit of, it feels like caramel notes in it. I'm not a huge juice drinker, like on its own, but that juice is so refreshing. Um, it's again a signature juice that they have all over Disney World. I would say the strongest notes are the passion fruit, but they're tempered by the orange and the guava. It is quite delicious, and you can get a mimosa made with that if you if you ask for it. Hi, Daisy! You oh my gosh, yes, Queen! You are so cute, and I love your ballet outfit and your shoes. Oh my gosh, you are the most beautiful ballerina I've ever seen. Do you, do you do Swan Lake? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm very excited to try this little apple crumb cake. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm also a little hesitant because they used to have these apple turnovers that were like my favorite thing here. They were these turnover filled pastries. They changed seasonally, so they had like apple, they had vanilla maple at one time, and this replaced those. But it looks delicious, so. Here we go. I put honey butter on it. Very moldy, that pastry was so good. Oh my god, it was so moist and the little crumble on top. You can absolutely tell that these pastries are house made compared to other breakfast buffets when you go. I mean, those are just, that was amazing. That's my favorite one. I'm also going to try the croissant. I'm dipping it in the Nutella right now. And the strawberry. Mm. Lakey buttery perfection. Yeah. This pastry basket is one of my favorite things about this restaurant because not only is it so cute, but the pastries are so, so delicious. They're a perfect way to start off this meal. I think they add a lot to it, increase the value of it. They're so good. They're brought to you, they're house made, and they are wow, delicious. The different spreads and toppings, put honey butter on it. Your beautiful dress. Oh my gosh! I love that. Did you write all those poems? You did? You're so talented. What do you write your poetry about? Mickey? Oh my gosh, y'all are so cute! <laughs> The entrees have arrived. I'm not gonna lie to you, this meal right here, this dish is one of the reasons I was so excited to come to this restaurant. It's the quiche gruyere, and it's got house-made pancetta, some roasted potatoes here on the side, field greens and a lemon vinaigrette. It's a little baby quiche. I love quiche, and uh, I'm excited to enjoy this one. I also opted for a half serving of the sour cream waffle. So this has got roasted apple, chantilly cream, orange maple syrup, and if you were to get a full size of this, it would come with your choice of protein. So you are a sweeter breakfast eater. This is a great choice. Um, but for me, I just wanted to indulge a little bit as I luxuriate here. 
at Topolino's Terrace, which is why I picked that one on the side. Mm, look at this thing. Flaky crust. Look at that creamy. Look at all that cheese. I think it's the best quiche I've ever had. It is so creamy. There's like wheat in there that is a strong flavor, that really creamy, dreamy gruyere, plus the egg, the buttery flaky crust. It is a phenomenal quiche. It does not taste like what your standard egg dish is going to be at a theme park. It is so delicious. So I'm going to try one of these potatoes. I like that these potatoes are elevated because you're in a fancy location compared to like a hash brown or a tater tot. They're like baby potatoes that have been smashed. They're buttery, creamy, crispy on the skin. They're very, very delicious. From the nuances of the water set. Which really simple sound. I wish I could get the recipe to that lemon grit to that lemon vinaigrette, but behind the scenes, I my mom was just here. I've been eating for days, and my server was like, if you get the half size of the quiche, you're actually going to just get the full quiche just without the sides, and you won't get the salad or the potatoes. And I was like, no, listen, I need a salad. This one's good. It's very simple. I understand for most people, it's smarter to get another item as your full order and then get the quiche as your half, but as someone who wanted a salad, I'm not just Hi, Donald! Look at you! Have you been busy sculpting? Just all kinds of things. What have you been sculpting? Daisy? Oh my gosh, you love her. That is just so sweet. Get this waffle going. I do love that they offer the little side portion of another dish because I'm definitely more of a savory breakfast person, but I like to have a little something sweet. So I love that I can get a little dollop of these waffles. Now, the true treat, oh my gosh, Daisy's back, Daisy's back. Now I will say, I really, the pinnacle of character dining for me is a Mickey waffle, but I'm excited to try this. Oh, I take it back. This is the pinnacle of waffles in Disney World. I might have been too far. This house-made chantilly cream is unbelievable. As is the orange and juice syrup, it adds a little bit of citrus and brightness. It breaks up how sickly sweet syrup is, and I love syrup. It's one of my weird things. I normally hate sickly sweet stuff, but I love breakfast syrup. <clears throat> you know what it is? I don't care for sickly sweet artificial flavors, like fake fruit flavors. Those are not for me. This, there's nothing artificial about this. You can tell it's got real orange infused in there. It's got this house-made cream. It's delicious, fluffy waffle. Yum. Now, Mickey waffles are still Mickey waffles, so they're amazing and undeniable, and you should eat them, and they're on the kids' menu, but wow. If you were looking for a different savory option to maybe get with your waffle or side of whatever else you wanted though steak is a great purchase the steak is probably the best deal the best bang for your buck as far as the cost goes because it is a prefix cost um, but i love that they are now officially saying you can get a half portion of something else because for a while it was kind of a like if you asked you could get two entrees and some people would do it and someone and there wasn't like an official understanding of what was allowed so just know you're gonna get a lot of food for the price even though it's not technically an all you care to enjoy buffet my server brought me a kid's menu to look at um, and Minnie then took it and signed her name and then made sure to answer the question for me about Minnie Mouse. She was supposed to take the character and then match it to what their supplies are, but Minnie wanted to fill hers out for me, which is really funny, which is a great way to remind you that character autographs and hugs are back. Finished a most fabulous meal and of course had to come out onto the terrace. It is called Topolino's Terrace after all. Actually, fun fact, Topolino means Mickey in Italian, so it's Mickey's Terrace. And this view is absolutely stunning. You can see the Skyliner, Caribbean Beach, across the way over there you can see Tower of Terror, and if you keep looking you can see Everest and the Tree of Life. Over this way, you can see the Swan and Dolphin, the tops of World Showcase pavilions, and if you keep going, you can actually see the Land Pavilion. I love this restaurant at dinner as well. I came here on the Going to Every Disney World Resort Challenge video day and came up here and had drinks um, and an appetizer. This is one of my favorite spots to do that. Um, dinner is popular but not as in-demand as breakfast, and you can come up and enjoy the lounge first come first serve as well. All right. Sitting out on the beautiful terrace here, got my to-go coffee. Remember, that's my tip. Every time you go to a sit-down restaurant at Disney, get a to-go beverage um, of whatever you've been drinking. Is Topolino's Terrace 
worth the high cost and the stress of trying to get the number one hardest reservation to get in Walt Disney World right now is this breakfast. Blanket statement before we get started. The question, is it worth it, is incredibly hard to answer because it's incredibly subjective. It based on each individual family's needs, wants, finances, experience that they're looking for. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to give you pros and cons, compare it to similar experiences to help answer that. But at the end of the day, you have to decide if each of these is worth it for your own family. Well, let's go over the pros and cons. The pros, the characters are adorable. You get lots of character interactions. I think each character came around to my table twice, if not three times. You get your classic friends, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy in very, very cute outfits. Another pro to this restaurant is the location. I think the Riviera is beautiful. It's on the Skyliner, so it's easy to access from both Hollywood Studios and Epcot. I think a perfect case scenario would be to rope drop Hollywood Studios, get there bright and early, knock out a couple attractions, and then jump on the Skyliner over here for a later mid-morning kind of brunch situation. Situation. Uh, you could do the same thing at Epcot or maybe you're staying at one of these Skyliner resorts and it's easy to get to. I think the biggest pro when it comes to Tipolino's Terrace though is the food. It is far and away the best food you're going to get at a character dining experience in my opinion. It is high quality food and it is the restaurant I think that the food closest matches the high price tag of character dining. It's much more elevated than places like Chef Mickey's and Crystal Palace, but it's also still approachable and there's things that every palate are going to enjoy. I do think some people prefer to have an all you care to eat situation like at Chef Mickey's, Crystal Palace, Tusker House, etc. But for me, I do think it's a pro to be able to sit down, have the food brought to you plenty of food. You're not going to go hungry here and have the characters come to you. It just feels more luxurious as well. One of the biggest cons of Topolino's Terrace is again how hard it is to get a reservation. It is like I said the number one hardest reservation to get in Walt Disney World and while you can usually join the walk-up waitlist like I did today, do you want to risk that? If you're not going to be able to just drive up and park at the Riviera, if you're going to have to take time out of your day to try and come over to the Riviera to get on the walk-up waitlist, um, that can certainly be a con. And then of course it is expensive. But like I said, $45 for adult is the going rate for a character meal in Disney World. Ultimately, the big question, is it worth it? And while that question is pretty hard to answer because worth it means different things to different people, if you are coming to Walt Disney World with the intention of doing character dining and you're already going to spend the $45 it costs per person to do this experience, I don't think you can top Topolino's Terrace. So in my opinion, as someone who's a huge fan of character dining, who saw tons of kids loving everything, who thinks this food is phenomenal for character dining, I think you're not going to get better than this. And now, on to restaurant number two. I lied to you. We're not off to restaurant number two yet. We're coming into La Boutique, which is the store here, because I have to show you one of the cutest souvenirs in all of Walt Disney World. It's plushes of Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Daisy, and they're wearing their Topolino's outfits, and I simply cannot. They are so cute, and I just had to let you know that they're here. Okay, now on to restaurant number two. We made it to our second destination. We're gonna go ride Mission Space. No, I'm just kidding, I just ate. And that was a few hours ago, but truthfully, there's no amount of time that's long enough between eating and riding Mission Space if you don't wanna feel nauseous, IMO. We are going to Space 220. We are headed 220 miles above planet Earth to dine at Space 220. This restaurant opened up for the 50th anniversary last year, and it has become one of the most popular, one of the hardest dining reservations to get in Walt Disney World. But I was lucky enough to snag one for the lounge, which I think is actually the way to go here. We'll get into that in a minute. But now it's time to check in. I checked in with the cast member out front. I also noticed a decent line of folks hoping to get walk up. Got my boarding pass and about to take the space elevator. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, space elevator. That's official verbiage. That's not just me saying words. About to take the space elevator 220 miles up above Earth to the space station where we're going to have our meal. Okay, now they called it a stellivator, but I promise the boarding pass says space elevator. from Spas, took the Stellivator all the way up, and now we are on the Centauri Space Station. We'll be headed into the main dining area momentarily, but not without appreciating the beautiful wall of produce. Hydroponics, I believe. They borrowed the technology from living with the land. 
So I love to see the synergy. Here's one of my favorite details too, before you even get into the main view. As you walk in, you will see the wine cellar and it just looks really cool. It's nothing that fancy, it's just circles with wine bottles, but I just think it looks really cool. I have to admit, this elevator is very cool. It's, the theming in here is excellent, and I'm not even like a space person. You know, people are like space people or under the sea people, or like they were like obsessed with something as a kid. I was obviously a sea person, a shark person. But like, look at this. It's really cool. It is absolutely amazing looking out the window. It's a very cool experience being in this restaurant and you can see why this is such a popular location. A couple Easter eggs to look for out the window. You'll actually see residents, permanent residents of the space station out exercising. You'll see them on hoverboards. You might even see them walking a space dog or playing with lightsabers. There also occasionally is a space craft that flies by and it's the same one you're flying on in Mission Space. So I love that tie into the attraction next door. Now that we're up here, let's talk about the different reservations you could book at Space 220. You could book lunch or dinner. In those cases, you'll be sitting down closer to the actual space window, or you may be sitting up on this upper level over in these sections. If you book lunch or dinner, you are locked into a pre-fix experience. At lunch, it's two courses. You get an appetizer and an entree. It's $55 for adults. At dinner, it's a three-course meal. You get an appetizer, entree, and dessert, and it's $79 for adult. And if you book a restaurant reservation, you are locked into spending that much and doing the full multi-course meal. You can also book a reservation for the lounge. Now, that is the little section I'm in right here, all these tables along the way. So you'll see they're not as good as some of the seats um, that the prefix guests will enjoy. However, the perk of visiting the lounge only is you can customize your experience. Those prefix meals are available to you, but you can also just order drinks or order something off of their light bites menu. So you're not locked into a full multi-course meal uh, and the expense and time it would take to do that. The third option is to do a walk up at the bar here. Now I was originally told that the bar seating would be for guests 18 and older, but there's kids sitting here. So I think you can have anybody sit at the bar, but as you can see, there's not very many bar stools and those are first come first serve. If you'd like to sit there, if you're not able to secure a reservation to the lounge or the restaurant, you're gonna wanna get here early. Before we get into the menu, while we're up here luxuriating in space, let's talk about booking dining reservations. In the past, it was 180 days prior to the first day of your vacation. However, now it is 60 days prior to the first day of your vacation. I say 60 days out from the start of your vacation because if you are a Walt Disney World Resort Hotel guest, you can actually book for your entire vacation up to 10 days at that 60 day mark. Um, so if you're staying for four days, you can book all four days worth of reservations at that 60 day mark. Um, if you're not staying at Walt Disney Resort, then you'll have to go day by day. When you are booking your dining reservations, if you are staying at a Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, you're gonna wanna book the furthest out dates first because those are going to have less people trying to book them and as a pro tip you're going to want to put your more in demand restaurants on those further days out the restaurants we're going today should all be top priorities as well as cinderella's royal table despite the fact that as of filming this only cinderella is there the rest of the princesses haven't returned storybook dining with snow white over at artist point is also incredibly popular chef mickey's can get booked up pretty easily as well be our guests can also book up very quickly so you're going to want to do some strategic planning and figure out which reservations you want to book which days you want to book them and try to book those first at that 60 day mark. Reservations typically open up between 5.30 and 5.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on every day. I'm sorry for anyone that's in a later uh, time zone. I don't understand time zones are very confusing, but I think, is that 2 something a.m. for California? Also, no, it's better to fiddle faddle between the specific time than it is just to click breakfast in my experience. Uh, so you're gonna wanna click like nine, then 8.30, then 9.30, and like fiddle faddle around with it that way. If you don't get a reservation, never fear, keep checking back. People tend to book a lot of things at the outset of their vacation and then cancel things as plans change, especially closer leading up to going to that dining location. So keep checking back. Uh, and you may also wanna consider using a third party reservation service. I actually use mouse dining. This is not sponsored in any way. I've never spoken to anyone at Mouse Dining. It's a service that I pay for every month and have for years um, because they will actually notify you when a reservation comes up. You can set alerts for different reservations and then while you still need to act quick and respond quickly to that text message service, um, it can help you book different reservations. That's actually how I got Space 220s. I signed up for alerts on Space 220 Lounge and Restaurant and I was lucky enough to snag the lounge spot. So never give up. Don't give up fear. And last case, you can always try walk-up waitlist or walking up to certain locations and getting there early.
Now let's get into the menu. Here is your lounge menu. So they have flight bites. There are deviled eggs, calamari, the tempura fried cauliflower, chicken and waffles, short rib sliders, and shrimp cocktails. A few of those items are things you can get as your appetizer if you're doing one of the prefix meals, but a couple of them are lounge exclusives. You also have a variety of themed drinks. Uh, some I'd like to call out include the Big Tang, which actually has astronaut ice cream on it. That's like a margarita. The Atmo Spritz is like an Aperol Spritz with a cotton candy cloud. They have an old fashioned. Uh, so they do have some fun themed beverages up here. They've also got a variety of beers and wines. They have a variety of mocktails and non-alcoholic specialty beverages. You can get those served in a fancy space cup if you've got kiddos. They also come with space trading cards, which is very fun if you have a kid or someone who's not enjoying an alcoholic beverage. Here is your lunch menu. Again, you get an appetizer and an entree, $55 a person. The variety of appetizers, the liftoffs, include the Big Bang Burrata. That's my personal favorite. They've also got calamari, the tempura buffalo cauliflower. They have a couple of different salads as well, including a tuna niswa salad. For your main course, you've got seared tuna, salmon, um, steak frites, steak salad, chicken, pasta, burger, and spaghetti and shrimp. You can add as an additional cost any of the sides as well. And even though I'm here at lunchtime, my fabulous server Gigi asked if I wanted to share a dinner menu with folks as well. Uh, so here you have, again, the same liftoffs, but you are also adding in a couple more at dinner, a scallop ravioli and a lobster bisque. For your entrees, you've got a short rib, duck, chicken, snapper, salmon, the same shells, um, and a filet. You can also upcharge for an additional fee to a lobster stuffed with crab or a 24 ounce ribeye. And then again, at dinner, you get a dessert included. They've got carrot cake. That's actually their vegan dessert. And it was my favorite when I came here uh, opening day. They've also got a couple of other gelato, cheesecake, etc. And again, you've got those sides. My space cocktail has arrived. This is the big tang. So it's tequila contro, tang infused agave. And then it's even got a little astronaut ice cream sandwich chunk right on there. I thought when I first came to this restaurant that it would be really, really gimmicky. I, in my brain, had put it on par with like a Rainforest Cafe or a T-Rex where all the drinks are super sugary and over the top and, and gimmicky. The whole thing would be kind of gimmicky. And in a way, this restaurant is like that, but it's also much more elevated. So this is about as gimmicky as it gets because of that little astronaut ice cream sandwich. Then, of course, being made with tang is fun. Um, and then there are also, again, that Aperol Spritz with the cotton candy. Andy, I would say those two are the most like themed cocktails as far as what they look like goes. The rest are, of course, themed name name wise. Cheers. It is a very good margarita. It's a little on the sweeter side. Of course, Tang is sweet, um, so it's got a little bit more of that orange flavor. So it's definitely sweeter than something like if you were to get old fashioned, which I actually do think is a pretty good old fashioned on this menu, but it's not as sweet as something like that Aperol Spritz that's got cotton candy in it. You can still taste the alcohol, um, but mostly I am tasting the tang. And while I do love an old fashioned, I do like getting something a little bit gimmicky when I'm places like this, and I'm glad that they have this kind of drink, but also it tastes good. It's not just for show. You know who would like this? Harry Stamper from the Smash Film Armageddon. That's a joke from our podcast. Are you listening to our podcast, Cena Slipitas, where we recap every Disney Channel original movie? Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. But I will say, we're in the top five most followed podcasts this year on Spotify, so pretty proud of that. Check it out if you haven't already. Anyway, back to space. In addition to my space margarita, I am having space cauliflower. This is the Blue Moon Cauliflower. So it's tempura fried cauliflower. It's got house-made hot sauce and a blue cheese dust on there. It's got some celery wedges. This is an appetizer again. It's available at the lounge, and it's also one of the prefix appetizers at lunch and dinner. <gasps> space dog! Space dog! Space dog! Come back, space dog. He was right there. He was gone so fast. Before we get into this delicious cauliflower, it's time for your friendly Molly's PSA of the day. Did you see this fork? Nice black fork, a standard black fork. They used to have much cooler forks here. They were really long and skinny. I think they were like William Sonoma. They were awesome. And I said, with this restaurant open, they're going to get rid of those because too many people are stealing them. 
they got rid of them. And I'm going to assume it's because people were stealing them. It's like the Sporks and Galaxy's Edge all over again. So my PSA for the day, I can't believe I'm happy to tell you this, don't steal the silverware from restaurants. What are you doing? Now we have lame normal forks. You did this. I assume none of you did this. And if you did, I'm mad at you. Cutting into this cauliflower with my lame normal fork. You can see it's beautifully fried, nice and crispy. Let's get a bite. Let's get a lot of hot sauce. I wish they sold space hot sauce because it's delicious. I'm serious. I'm just staring for the dog who's so fast. Now I'm afraid he's not going to come back again by the time I leave. Now it's just lame space people. I'm so glad this cauliflower is as good as I remember it. It's actually hot. There is definitely heat in this house made hot sauce. It is perfect, but it's not acidic and hot just for hot sake. It actually has really good flavor. There's a nice crispiness, that flakiness from the tempura crunch, and then you've got that beautiful cauliflower in there. Little dusting of blue cheese. If you're not a blue cheese fan, I honestly can't really taste it that much. However, if you don't care for blue cheese, I'm sure that they can take that off. It is a really good dish. It's something a little bit different and unique. And again, I love that at the lounge. I can just come in and grab this, or I also really like the sliders, the chicken and waffle, make it a little bit more of a lighter meal or like a shareable kind of tapas situation and not be locked into a very, very long meal when you come for a multi-course experience. Okay, this kind of makes up for Space Dog. There was an astronaut that just flew by and he was playing with a model of an X-Wing, like a Star Wars starship. So that's pretty cool. A cute little detail. Look at the little signs of the bathroom. Other cute details inside the bathroom include signs about in case of loss of gravity and the baby changing sign. Now the big question, is Space 220 worth it? Should I visit Space 220? For me, when I heard about Space 220, I thought two things. One, why is this going in Epcot? Epcot already has the best food in Walt Disney World, festivals, so many places to eat around World Showcase. Shouldn't this go maybe in Tomorrowland and Magic Kingdom, which could definitely use a new sit-down restaurant? I still think that. But I also thought, is it going to be gimmicky? Is it going to be a T-Rex or Rainforest Cafe where the food quality is meh, but you go for the experience? I no longer think that. I do think this is absolutely an experience heavy restaurant. I think that first and foremost, you are fighting to get this reservation and you are paying this price because of the location, the experience, the immersiveness of this restaurant. But I actually think the food is very good and many things I've eaten here have blown me away as far as the quality goes. I genuinely love this blue moon cauliflower dish. I had a great steak here. I like that burrata salad. The food is quite good. Now, is it worth the price of the prefix meal? Eh, that's up to you. I think the bigger question is, do you want to do a prefix meal? Do you want on your Epcot day to sit inside this restaurant for an hour, maybe two, doing a three course meal? For me, the lounge or walking up to the bar is a no brainer. You get to come in the restaurant, which we can, I think, all agree is the most important thing about Space 220. It's getting inside this restaurant. And then you don't have to order a big meal that maybe you don't want on your Epcot day. I had a Tupelo Nose Terrace a few hours ago. I already had a bunch of food there. I don't want a two-course full meal right now. I wanted to come in here and enjoy a cocktail and an appetizer, and I was able to do that without a problem. When I have personally brought family members and friends into Space 220, I book us a lounge reservation. The first time Alan came, the first time my mom came, we booked lounge reservations so we could get a couple appetizers to share amongst ourselves, get a cocktail, and enjoy being in here, which again is the whole reason to come to Space 220. So for me, the lounge is absolutely worth it. Even if you just come one time to see this, I think it's a very cool experience, especially if you've got little ones or somebody in your party that loves space. There's tons of kids in here and they're all oogling and ogling over the astronauts and the view out the window. And I do think it's very, very cool. Plus you've got things like the lettuce wheel and the space elevator. It is very, very neat and a very unique dining experience. Personally, for me, I think the multi-course meal is a little bit harder to swallow. I personally recommend lunch over dinner. It's one, a little bit less expensive, and two, it doesn't come with dessert, and I think that's okay, because while the desserts I've had here are very good for table service desserts, I still think, one, you're probably gonna be full, and two, it's more fun, I think, to go out into the park and get something from the caramel shop in Germany, the bakery in France, the bakery in Norway, ice cream in France, something at a festival kiosk in Epcot as opposed to eating all three meals. Ultimately though, if you are a space fan, if you are a foodie, if you are a Disney fan, I think you need to come into this restaurant at least once. For most people, I think Space 220 is a one and done, but for me, the lounge especially, is worth it to get in here at least once to check out the atmosphere. Almost forgot my delicious space ice cream. 
I'm so chalky. Our poor brave men and women and astronauts who go to space on behalf of us. They brave the final frontier for us and that's what we give them. They don't deserve that. And now I'm headed back down to Earth. One thing I do like about this is if you leave during the daytime, it's going to show you the daytime. If you leave at nighttime, it's going to be nighttime when you go out the space elevator. So I think that's cool. The Polynesian Village Resort is one of Walt Disney World's opening day resorts. It opened up on October 1st, 1971, and it is on the monorail line for the Magic Kingdom. So it's an incredibly popular resort, and Ohana is an incredibly popular restaurant. Duh, of course it is. We, that's why we're making this video. I arrived at the Polynesian without a reservation to Ohana, but was uh, checking the walk-up wait list, fiddle-faddling around, and I actually was able to book a reservation last minute. Someone must have canceled or no-showed, uh, but this is another one where I recommend using that walk-up wait list. They open up for dinner at 3.30, so this would be a great choice to like monorail over from the Magic Kingdom. Remember, the earlier you can get to these locations, the likelier you are to get on that walk-up wait list. So because I have a little bit before I am actually able to dine, I went and grabbed a cocktail from the Tambu Lounge, which is the bar next door. I want to give a special shout out to the cast member who I said, I wanted a tropical cocktail, but they're usually too sweet. So she's like, well, what do you like to drink normally? And so I just got a plain boring beverage, but she made it fancy and fun. It's just a tequila soda, but she like made it tropical. So we love cast members. All checked in, just waiting to get seated. So let's talk about the Ohana menu. At breakfast, you're looking at a character meal here. It's going to be Mickey and Pluto and Lilo and Stitch. It is all you care to enjoy, but it is family style. So they're going to bring you a big skillet with eggs and bacon and sausage and Hawaiian ham and all kinds of goodies like that. It's pretty good. It's standard and it is one of the only places that you can meet Stitch. So if you've got a Stitch fan, you may want to consider it. But Ohana at dinner is the one that fills up super quick. It is incredibly popular. It's an all you care to enjoy feast. I'm talking the famous Ohana nudes. I'm talking pot stickers, chicken wings, the incredible Ohana bread pudding, and most importantly, all you can eat, meat sticks. Somebody say meat sticks. Our table is ready, and I am thrilled to be wearing spanky shorts and no waist. Coming into the Polynesian, specifically coming into Ohana, really is nostalgic for me. This is some of my family members, my great uncle's favorite resort. I remember eating here as a kid, coming to the character meal as a kid, and just like being in this restaurant immediately brings me back to, to nostalgia, which is probably a, a reason that it's so popular for a lot of people too. Um, but then of course, all you can eat food doesn't hurt either. So taking a look at the feast, you get Ohana bread and salad to start. And then for the entrees, you do the big skillet with the chicken wings, the pork dumplings, the nudes, and the broccolini. And then you've got your meat which are the teriyaki beef, the spicy peel and eat shrimp, and the grilled chicken with chimichurri. And then we get to look forward to one of my favorite desserts on Disney property, the Ohana bread pudding. Now, non-alcoholic, non-specialty beverages are included with your meal. So if you would like a soft drink or an iced tea, a coffee, a juice, that's included. But of course, they uh, can offer you more of those specialty or full bar uh, beverages if you'd like to add those on. Ohana is $59 per adult at dinner and $38 per kids three to nine at dinner. So it's definitely not an inexpensive meal, but uh, I think this one at least is gonna eat his money's worth in meat. I may or may not have done the math. There's only one question I have for you. Are you ready? <laughs> well done. Course one has arrived. And we have appetizers, the signature Ohana bread with honey butter as well as the mixed greens salad with a citrus vinaigrette. Some light bites before we get into the heavier eating. Alan, may I offer you some salad? <laughs> Since I am not a rabbit, no, I do not. No. Okay. <laughs> Gotta save your strength. A little bit of a butter dip. The bread itself is light on the interior, great crust on the exterior, slightly sweet, and it matches beautifully with the honey butter. It's intended to be a little bit of a palate cleanser, I would imagine, between your courses. I'm just gonna eat it all. 
I'm taking it a salad. Now the salad has changed over the years. I did prefer the other one more, um, but this one's still very good. The dressing is what makes it. It's slightly sweet. It's got a little bit of citrus flavor, and the salad's always light and crisp. But let's be honest, the salad's not why you're here. While most people come to Ohana for the meat, I come for this course. The appetizer course. This is where I earn my money back at Ohana. You've got pork dumplings, the famous teriyaki nudes, broccolini, and the coriander chicken wings. This is my favorite part of Ohana. Time for some nudes. And remember, it's all you care to enjoy, so if you want more of anything, just ask and they'll get you whatever you'd like. But oh baby, chicken wings. Nudes, more nudes, I think. Um, and for for health. The Ohana teriyaki noodles truly make me a better person. They're slightly sweet because the teriyaki, but they're not too sweet. They're not salty, which is often a concern here. The noodles are always cooked perfectly. It's just a really simple dish. It's a little bit peppery, and uh, if you like teriyaki flavors, these are a win. They're my favorite thing. I will absolutely be ordering more noodles. The chicken wings are phenomenal as well. I don't know how they cook them perfectly every single time, but they always are. Nice crispy skin, beef falls off the bone, it's very tender, it's not dry, which often happens when cooking chicken and both. Slight sweetness because the honey, A plus wings. Come close. It's good. It's roasted. But it's here to remind you that you could be healthy. But do you really want to be? These dumplings are perfect. Crispy on the exterior, soft on the interior. Flavored beautifully, not too salty, which you do run the risk of. If I wasn't waiting for the meat, I'd eat all of these. It's chimichurri chicken time. And while it used to be on sticks, isn't meat on a stick just a frame of mind? I think it is. Chimichurri chicken into my mouth hole. The chicken is moist, the skin is crispy, the chimichurri is lightly acidic. Did you have to say moist? You know what? Yes. Yes, I did. It all works together and plays together really nicely. Anything that touches a grill, I'm a fan of. And this chicken spent some time there. I adore the ukulele player. He just makes my soul smile. He's very talented. They don't have the coconut braces, though. The coconut brew braces, if anyone remembers those. But what we do have is a fan favorite of the spicy peel and eat shrimp. He's playing Moana now. It's really good. Uh, the peel and eat shrimp are very tasty. They're not my personal favorite. I'm more of a steak kind of gal. I'm a clam guy. Um, but they are ample in flavor. I wish they were a little spicier because they are advertised as spicy. And it feels like a lot of the spice is probably on the peel that you take off um, on the shell. But very, very delicious, nicely cooked, um, tastes very fresh. And if you're a shrimp fan, I think you could get a lot done here. The teriyaki steak is amazing. Again, everything has that nice char from the grill. It is cooked very well, although it's a little bit more well done than I'm used to eating my steak, but that's okay because the flavors are there. It's slightly sweet, a little tangy, not super salty, but very rich in flavor, and I dig it. And I'm gonna get back to eating the rest of it. And here it is, the piece de resistance. No matter how full you feel, you will find the strength to enjoy the famous Ohana bread pudding. You got pineapple bread pudding right there, vanilla bean ice cream on top, and a warm caramel sauce to pour on top of the whole thing. I don't know what's happening in the Ohana kitchen, but this bread pudding is so incredible. It is so dense. It is so moist. The cold ice cream with that warm caramel sauce, the warm bread pudding, it is like unbelievable deliciousness. I cannot explain to you how good this dessert is. It's just unreal. That's a lot. My spanks are tight. 
same. <laughs> Chafing is not just a woman's problem. <laughs> oh, um, pro tip, wear comfortable, loose-fitting clothing when you go to Ohana. Good tip. I wore jeans once. Worst mistake I ever made. Okay, what do you think of Ohana? Ohana is great. It's a classic. It's an iconic Disney meal. It is one of those Disney things. I think similar to Space 20, but for different reasons. You need to go at least once. Now, the question of is it worth it, I think is actually the hardest here of any of the restaurants I've been today. Do you think that was worth $59? I think for me, yes. But then again, I'm also the target demographic who wants to go to Ohana. If you have dietary restrictions or if you are a vegan, probably not going to be the spot for you to go. But for me, who you know, challenge except wants to tackle that amount of food, yes, that's worth it. I think in general, dining in Disney is very expensive, so it's easy to balk at a $59 meal. But if you were to compare it to a signature restaurant where you can pay that much for just your entree, and you get here a wide array of starters, appetizers, meat, and dessert, and a drink, I think in the Disney scheme of things, that's not an outrageous price. That said, Disney food is very, very expensive, and if you're not gonna eat $60 worth of food, then maybe Ohana's not for you. Maybe you should go to Tambu Lounge and just order the wings or just the nudes or just the bread pudding, which is on the secret menu. We've talked about that in other videos. Overall, I'm incredibly full, but had a great time going to three of the most popular and in-demand restaurants across Walt Disney World property. Hopefully this video was helpful to you to figure out how you can get into some of these high demand places. Don't forget that mobile wait list. Don't give up on your dining reservations. Use a third party alert service. Hopefully you can eat some of these places too. And hopefully this was helpful in showing you what you can expect at these locations. Be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to like. Be sure to like. Is Be sure the to like it's, the the meat. Meat. it's the meat. It's the meat. It's the meat. I'm literally flush. Do you see this? You have the meat sweats. I have the meat sweats. All right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and follow us on all of our socials. It's at Mammoth Club or at Mammoth underscore club. Until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Al. And it's been magical and delicious. Very filling. I need to take a look. Can I take a nap? Mm -hmm.